So according to Dr. Robert Anthony, here's the real secret behind the secret. Okay. It's not your action that makes things happen. It's your intention. I love that, intention. That's the declaring part of it. And if you focus on what you want instead of what you don't want, you'll know when it's time to take action. And when you do, it will just seem effortless. I love that. Simply put, you should take no action on anything until you have visualized your desire and made it so real in your mind that your next action step, whatever that is, it just seems like the most natural and logical thing to do. So here's the test that you can give yourself before you take any action. If you focus on your desire and you're still feeling overwhelmed or anxious, then you're not ready to take action yet. So what I make up about that is if you're not ready to take action, if you're thinking about what you want and you're still feeling overwhelmed, then go back to the drawing board. Again, you're the architect. You're painting the picture of what you want. If you're not clear about what, is to, what, what you need to do next, then go back to the drawing board and get more clear about what it is that you want, and the action step will seem like the most logical thing to do. I love that. I love that, it too. It makes it so easy. It just takes all the responsibility in, in, of action, of doing, off of us, and it just gives us the joy of imagination. You teach this in class that imagination is the most powerful, our pa most powerful tool. It's most, more powerful than knowledge or, or reasoning or any of that. So, yeah, I love when you teach that. So the last thing here is, however, however, we get caught up in the reality of what is, and then we feel like we must create everything through all that mental effort and physical activity. The truth is, and they talk about this in The Secret, just wait for that inspired thought. Wait for an opportunity. Wait for something that feels so good that, that it seems like the most natural thing to do. And then act on it. Do it. Follow your intuition. That's our greatest guidance system is our intuition. And we sort of push it to the side. When you get that inspired thought, that intuitive nudge, go for it and act on it. So here's the truth. Here's okay. more of the truth. Okay. Okay. I'm, getting, I'm getting excited Tell now. I'm getting excited. Hallelujah, Mitchell. Let's okay. go. <laughs> Anytime you feel pain or struggle, your magnetic point of attraction is directed to that which you do not want rather than that which you desire. Boy, how true is that? So remember now that the creation of anything is through your vibration and that everything vibrates and it's that vibration that we harmonize with and attract experiences into our lives. So before you act, or before you do anything, first ask yourself, how am I vibrating? How do you tell? You tell by how you feel. We talked about this a little earlier. Your emotions are your guidance system. So pay attention to how you, how you feel, and your feelings will show you your vibration. I have this great box that I keep, and it says, everything I put in this box vibrates, and as it vibrates, the universe matches it with stuff, you know? And everything I've ever put in that box, I've gotten. It's the point of attraction. Feel good. That's the best part of this, you guys, is you get to feel good all the time, and then you get to experience more and more joy and peace and happiness and everything you're wanting. <sighs> Thank you, Mitchell. I have to a little <laughs> applause for that. I love it when, when, we, when I got a call called the Church of Mitch. Woo I get really excited. I'm ready to attract calls it Mitchisms. Mitchisms. Mitch Mitchisms. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so, you know, there's people out there, you know, that I absolutely admire because without knowing any of these laws, they're doing this automatically like Oprah talks about in her clip. Oh, right. And I, I watch these people and I think, yes, yes, more of that, please. And I actually, we have an interview that we did with, with one of these people that I'd like to show and get queued up there and, and show you that it's not just a couple of people who study the mind, you know, who, who come out and talk about this. It's not these just these inspirational authors and speakers that you see in The Secret, but this is how people get what they want every day without breaking it down, without understanding the law. This is how they're doing it. So I'm going to get that clip ready. Excellent. Perfect. I think this is such a good example, too, of just, you know, Daniel's just so natural at this. He's, it's just, he even says at some point, I think, in the interview that people accuse him of of taking advantage of the secret because he's, it's just so natural for him. So this is great. Yeah, so let's, let's get that clip roll in there. Hi, I'm on location at Albuquerque Indoor Karting. I'm sitting here with President Daniel Chavez, who started Albuquerque Indoor Karting, and we're talking to him today because I'm so absolutely amazed and impressed at people who just go out and realize their dreams. Just 
concentrate on what they want and go out and do it. So thanks, Daniel, for letting us come by and, and check out your place. No problem. Thanks for being here. I'm uh, excited to have you guys here and maybe even get you guys out on a cart to have some fun. Oh, we're all about having fun. Mitch and I would love to get on a cart and have a okay. good time. So a couple of years ago, your life was vastly different than this, wasn't it? Yeah, I had a corporate job. I worked for a Fortune 500 company. Just um, people say clocking in every day. You know, that, that was my job, just going in, clocking in, doing my job and going home and having a regular life, but um, after that I got laid off and you know that was my inspirational moment to start Albuquerque Indoor Party. So it was your inspirational moment from something that seems like for most people getting laid off could be like, oh my god, what am I going to do now? But you took that moment to say this is an opportunity, is that correct? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I had always known that I would never wanted to work for somebody my whole life and Intel was a great springboard for me, which is where I used to work before. and taught me a ton, but then it also taught me that I didn't want to be in corporate America my whole life, and it taught me that I needed to go out and find what it is I wanted to do, and after many years of doing indoor karting across the country, it really made me decide this is what I want to do. It's a really fun thing to do, and what better thing could you do than have fun at your job? You know, that's awesome. Exactly. I mean, that's pretty much what I live by, what Mitch and I live by, and what we what we really want to get out to people that life is fun and going out and having fun is, is a really wonderful thing. Uh, so you're, yeah. Well, how do you go from you know having the security of a, a paycheck coming in to saying, you know what, I lost my job and I'm going to realize my dream and open a place like this? I mean, what do you have to tell yourself every day? Or what did you have to tell yourself every day to find the building and get the financing and do this amazing operation? Well, a lot of it was not only me supporting myself, but it was my my network supporting me, you know. Um, there was people involved, such as my wife. She was probably the biggest fan of this thing, and besides myself, that wanted to see this happen and wanted me to make it happen, you know. So without her support, it would never have happened, but she was a big driver in it. And then every day you just wake up thinking almost like a project plan. Um, what am I going to do today to get closer to my milestone? You know, the biggest thing... In this deal, the two biggest things were financing and finding a real estate, you know, uh -huh. and um, once you get the financing part figured out, you can get the real estate part figured out pretty easy, but um, those are the two biggest challenges. Once I knocked those out, I just came up with a, a plan, pretty much, of working myself to the bone until we got this thing started, which, you know, we made it happen, and it took a lot of work, a lot of investors hard work a lot of my hard work and a bunch of subcontractors that we dealt with mm -hmm. but we made it happen you know i can see that that's really fantastic and whenever i'm working on a project big or small and this is definitely a huge project i have i call it the cheerleader in my head it's the person that goes you can do it brandy because then sometimes i have that really person in my head mm -hmm. that's like who do you think you are so what did you tell yourself as you're as you're going through this what thoughts were running through your head on a daily basis that you motivated yourself and you're like, this is achievable. What did you tell yourself? Um, well, what my neighbor, who was also an investor in this and a huge worker and did help me almost every day that we worked on this thing, um, always said, what, what did he say? How do you eat an elephant? He used to tell me. One bite at a time. You know, that's pretty much how you eat an elephant. Mm -hmm. And. Um, <laughs> One bite at a time, that's great. So anytime you're looking at something, you know, big to do, anytime somebody is out to realize their dream, if somebody came up to you tomorrow and said, Daniel, I, I want to open a flower shop, and I know all the business stuff, like I've got the training, I know how to do that, but I'm not so sure that I could really make it work, what would you tell them, what would you say to encourage them for someone to go after their dreams and really get what they want? Yeah. Confidence is huge. Um, you know, if you start thinking you're not so sure, that's not a good sign. I mean, when I went into this, I was pretty sure that it was everything I wanted, you know? And um, you have to be really positive about how you're going to approach it and how you're going to make it work. Failure's not an option. I mean, um, if you put everything you got into your business, it's going to work. If you're going to treat your customers well, you're gonna um, treat your employees well, and just do good business. It's going to work. As long as you put your effort into it, I believe it will work, no matter who you are. 